Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the Preston Show, episode 11. Glad you could be here. This is podcast number 11, folks. Podcast number 11. Great to be doing the podcast. I do podcasts. Do you do the podcast? What do you do? Podcast number 11. I'd like to open it up by talking about the UFC tonight. Some great fights last night in Bel Air on Axis TV. Some great fights across the board. Very happy with the fights last night. Tonight, I'm even more excited. We have the headliner, Robbie Lawler versus Rafael Dos Anjos, and it's going to be a great fight. Now, I don't think it's going to go the distance. Robbie Lawler looks like he's ready to finish fights. He's uh, more motivated than I've ever seen him fight before, and I've seen all of his fights. Uh, he's definitely more motivated than I've ever seen him before, and this is going to be a great exhibition here. Now, we have on the UFC Fight Pass to kick off the prelims, it's going to be Eric Silver or er Eric Silva versus Jordan Maine. Yeah, I got to get his name right. And then Alicio DiCherico versus All Uwale Barnbos. You got John McDessie versus Abel Trujillo. And I'm taking Abel in this fight. Um, the two fights before this, I would say Eric is going to get the win. And I would say Al Uwale is going to get the is going to get the win over Alicio de Chirico. But I don't think John McDessie can match Abel. We'll see what happens. This fight could go the distance, but Abel uh, is in a position to win and do a lot of damage in the process. So I'm hoping to see a great, great bout when these two go at it. There's Chad LaPrize versus Galore Bonifoto. Ba Bafano. Uh, now this looks like it was scratched. So we got Danny Roberts stepping in. Versus Nordin Taylib. We got Darren Stewart versus Julian Marquez. And we got Jan Blackowicz versus Jared Cannonier. I got Jan to win. I got uh, Julian Marquez over Darren Stewart. And I'm not taking a winner in this in this fight where. The, looks like the fighters the fight was scratched and they were and they, it's been replaced. You get to the main card. I mean to kick off the main card, it's set tonight, folks. I mean it's Glover Texiera, who had that devastating loss against Alexander Gustafsson, where he got just completely knocked out. But for most of the fight he was doing damage but, you know, this will be a different fight, and I'm telling you why. Because Gustafsson's, Alexander Gustafsson is not the guy that is going to stand there and bang with you in the middle of the octagon. He's not the guy. Wrong guy. Glover Texiera went into that fight thinking this was going to be a fight where they were both going to be able to see who, who, who could, you know, do the most damage and end it in the middle of the octagon. But Gustafsson did his, what I call the Gustafsson run. And he continued to mount a blitzkrieg of attack of, of just a, of just massive hits to the head, massive hits to the head. And by the last round, it was over. I mean, he was he was really close to not defending himself while standing on his feet. So Glover's going to rebound well. He's had a lot of time. He's had some good quality months in here now. To recover, I mean, I don't know if you could fully recover from that type of damage within a year, or how you know what I mean. But I think he'll come out and he'll be ready. But he's gonna fight someone that is a, a very tough cookie, Misha 
Kirkinoff. And the thing about him is that so far what I picked up about Kirkinoff is that he has very, very strong hands and he likes to bang it out. And uh, he also has, you know, a, I would say a better than patchwork ground game. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if Glover... Uh, it's a go a down to get some and getting submitted in this fight, but I'm thinking it's going to stay on the feet. I mean, I think a lot of shots are going to be exchanged in this fight. This is a fight that really matters for Glover's future. It, it, I don't, I don't know if he's talked about his last fight or when he's going to be his last fight, but this is a big fight right here for him. I think he wins this fight. I think there's so much at stake for him. I think there's so much at stake with the UFC. And, uh, you know, alone the UFC, now that you have Belator on the rise and all these other mixed martial arts organizations coming together. So, I mean, you'll see what you'll see. It, it, it all it all comes to fruition. So, but the UFC is still number one to me. And I think that in this fight, I'll take Glover and I'll, I'll put my money where my, where my mouth is on that one. Santiago, Ponzin and Bio. Versus Mike Perry. And Mike, I'm taking Mike Perry right off the bat. I've done my research on Pods Abito. If he could beat Mike Perry, good, that's fine. He proves me wrong. And then, you know, I, I, you know, I'll have some, some faith kind of restored in him. But I, I'm not knocking his ability at all. I think he's a great fighter. I just think Mike Perry is a, is a different type of fighter than anybody he's fought before. And I'm, I'm saying that because I think Mike Perry's a better fighter than anybody's fought, he's fought before. So let me just put those two parts together for you. So Mike Perry is a very flashy guy, but he's all business in the ring, all business in the octagon. And I think he's taking this fight very serious and he, he wants to re kind of reestablish to the division that, Hey, I'm here. I'm a force to be reckoned with. And I want a title shot and you gotta, you gotta win fights to do it. So this is a great opportunity for Mike Perry. I'm taking Mike Perry. Ricardo Lamas versus Josh Emmett. Man, there's a, there's a lot of talk about Josh Emmett. I think uh, I forgot to let what the Vegas has it at right now, but Ricardo Lamas, Ricardo Lamas, folks, is going to win this fight, and he's going to do it. He could do it in a number of ways, but I think he's going to do it with strikes, and I think he's going to put Josh Emmett down somewhere in the, like the second to third rounds. He's going to go. He's going to put him out. But I would take I would take Lamas in this fight. I put my money where my mouth is. Ricardo Lamas is going to win against Josh Emmett. Strikes, probably Josh Emmett goes down second or third round. Then we got the main event, Robbie Lawler versus Rafael Dos Anjos. I'm so ready for this fight. I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it for a week now. You know, maybe a little bit more than a week, but there were some good fights last week. So, I mean, you know, it all works itself out. But I'm definitely, definitely excited. Robbie Lawler, man, he's gonna he's gonna do some work, right? This guy is one of my favorite fighters to watch in the UFC, and I know there's a lot of other people out there that feel the same way. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch, and Rafael dos Anjos is no character. This guy has got real skills. You know, he's ready to to take out a top guy like. You know, Robbie Lawler. And he knows what's at stake. But I, I just think that Robbie Lawler consistently gets it done and gets it right. And, you know, there's a lot of guys, again, that are going to try to do it a different way. And they're going to try to end up changing their game plan because they feel or see the fight going a certain way. And Robbie Lawler's not one of those guys. You see him. He goes in there with one goal, one mission, and he sticks to it no matter what what's going on. The The beautiful thing about watching Robbie Lawler fight is his, his punching power and how he could just put people out. And some of these fights don't go that long, but I think this fight is going to go want to be going to be one of Robbie's longer fights. And I think he's got a great purpose 
and I think you know you have your kind of like your pyramid and it's like spiritual it's your your body and it's your mind and I think on all three levels he's he's there so I think he's there all on all three levels and I think that's going to push him over the edge because there is a lot of mental mind games that go into this and I don't think Rob is one of the guys that really lets it get to him so we'll see what happens but I've taken Rob Lawler in this fight off the fight topic the Senate will pass the tax plan somewhere around Wednesday or Thursday next week I'm I'm assuming Thursday but it could possibly be Wednesday, but they're, they're going to start working on it soon, very soon next week. So they said Monday, the house is going to sit down and they're going to, they're going to uh, set up shop. And then Tuesday, this is what the news, the one American news was saying. And then Tuesday, it's, it's all going to come into play. And this is going to be very interesting here because now, like I said on, on a couple podcasts ago, you're watching the Senate starting to react and understand that they have a prime opportunity and a great opportunity to get tax reform done. Not the best tax plan like Larry Kudlow and others have said, but it is a great tax plan for the middle class and for people who are struggling in poverty. And it's a great tax plan for corporations to bring business here and to also help the tax rate that has been forcing a lot of job closures that doesn't get talked about enough. So, you know, don't don't get caught up in the red tape. Don't get caught up in, in all the signs. Focus on what's important, your money, right? You, you, we, we hear about politics all the time, but very rarely are we pushed to think economically. And we're told to leave economics alone and it'll work itself out. But you got to understand it and you have to know how it works so you could follow the trends. And I think at least President Donald Trump has done those things with the people he's put into place over all these different organizations and these these committees. So, I mean, as far as the economy goes, it is looking strong and. No one said Obama had an easy job, but what we're saying is if you take the job of presidency and you hold the highest office in the land and you better have a plan and you better not be making excuses because I'm not big on excuses. And that's just something I, I'm more, I pride myself on and I don't let pride blind me from what's reality, but I'm big on don't make excuses and follow through on what you're going to do. Don't spread yourself out too thin. And the great thing about Trump is he's not spreading himself out too thin. He It's like a game of chess in politics. You put all the pieces where you need them to. And then you have to close the deal. Then you start the new game. And, you know, it is. it is That's exactly how politics works. And he's tried to do it with health care and it didn't work. So you have to move on. The problem with President Barack Obama was... He let a lot of issues that got stalemated uh, and a lot of times stifled because of the Republican majority in the House and Senate. You know, he let a lot of that get to him and prevent great things from happening in his presidency. And that is all on him and the people he put around him to not get over the difficult times, but instead retaliate with backlash and harsh rhetoric. What we have now is a president who has learned from previous president's mistakes, has seen social media's impact, and understands how important technology is. Although he needs President Donald Trump, the word criticism I have is that he needs to stress technology more because it is not. It is. It is not. People are not paying enough attention to it, and it is not talked about enough. In unfortunately for the people that hate it it's a reality and you're going to have to get used to it because i believe you know whether you like it or not things change and sometimes if you don't go with the change 
you end up getting left in a very dark place and it's not good and it's you can easily avoid it and prevent a lot of problems if you have someone explain it to you that's accurate and intelligent about what they're talking about the senate will more than likely pass the tax plan on thursday and this will come before christmas before the new year and we can reign in the new year with a new hope a new vision for our money and for the economics of the country and that's a beautiful thing about government is when they get it right millions benefit when they get it wrong it's the opposite effect so i mean take it in stride folks and continue to do your due diligence and don't let the news consume you bitcoin hits nineteen thousand dollars before the weekend what is going on with cryptocurrency this is a sign that the market is volatile yes it is trending up it has also been trending down cryptocurrency is such a volatile issue that when the government does get a hold of cryptocurrency and start to regulate it the way they see fit you will probably see the price skyrocket down and that's not because they're doing something bad or illegal it's just the fact of when government interferes in something you can usually tend to see the cost of that go down the, we're not saying anything about the quality we're not saying anything about anything but the quantity and that is what we are specifically talking about with bitcoin everybody knows currency is based on a trust that people have in it bitcoin lacking that but bitcoin has very strong resilience and a great resolve that it has been way lower than 19,000 and look where it's at now so you also have to really understand it and don't just blindly pass it by like i would say other cryptocurrency companies that are going to start up and you know kind of the startup phase is kind of playing itself out and it's there it's just not talked about as much so because it's not talked about as much people think that it's dying off but really it's just playing itself out and it's becoming a stable thing and instead of this oh my gosh look at me i have this great company it's now like oh you have a company well that's good because there's you know millions of people like you have a company like that so you also got to understand that as a big part of our economy uh is a lot of businesses that are the same but compete and you see it in resale and you see it in different industries but a lot of business you know food's a big one and it, it's it's just it's one of those things that you have to pay attention to and understand if you're going to ever invest any money in anything you got to understand how the economy works bitcoin is something that if you do invest in which i love bitcoin i think it's a great idea and i've been on the bitcoin uh bandwagon since the beginning but my problem with bitcoin is it's not stable yet you need five to ten years at least before i would throw any money into it now if another cryptocurrency started today i would probably think about investing in it so i mean if if one got through these regulations and these hard roads that bit bitcoin has made into inroads then you know that's that's a good sign it's a positive sign people related to the internet boom and i i think that is a very fair resemblance of what we've seen of you know what is taking place the undertaking here for bitcoin and the underlined effect that it has is that bitcoin is going to be around for a long time and it will be so moving on final segment of the show of the podcast here today folks PUBG and my experience so far so PUBG, if you didn't know player unknown battleground new video game on the xbox but it's not a new game it's been on the computer for quite some time um my experience so far prohibiting the the lag in the game and i know it's not my internet connection because other people are experiencing the same thing and i've seen all the all the reports and reviews about it and i've believe me i pay for quality internet because i do a lot of work from home so i have to have very fast internet so besides the lagging in the gameplay 
uh besides the some of the like the bullet drop isn't the best in the game yet because there's really not a lot of bullet drop you can shoot a submachine gun bullet very far and hit somebody pick somebody off for more than you know 400 yards plus like it's ridiculous but besides kind of some of the the overlook things and i think it's on the xbox is because it's behind the computer by a lot of updates is what the rumor around the mill is but i would say just beside all that because it's only a five gigabyte game it's you know barely over five gigabytes it's under six um five point something so i mean you know when you look at it for face value it's definitely worth the 30 dollar price tag on the xbox because it's not going to stay there once they incorporate these updates. Now, I don't, I don't think it will. I just don't believe Microsoft would keep it at that price after they see how much money they're about to get from the $30 price tag. So that's why I jumped on it. Uh, I encourage everybody to go and buy Player Unknown Battleground. It's $30 on the Microsoft Store. I mean, Merry Christmas. You know, run that back because that game is very fun. Like I said, there's going to be a couple things in a game that's not that big, doesn't have the infrastructure built into it yet. It's still very, very fragile, but it's very, very fun and addictive, and you'll get a great rush out of it. A great, you know, I call it the gamer itch. It will heal the gamer itch. So, other than that, just like the hands of time, I'm turning it over to you. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll have a podcast, I'm assuming Tuesday. Tuesday sounds like a great day for a podcast, or Wednesday. All right, so until Tuesday or Wednesday, folks, have a great night. Enjoy your weekend.